So we're at Commvault.com. Here's how we get the Commvault. We go to downloads.commvault.com. Then we click on Media Kits. Then when we're in Media Kits, we're going to click on the Solution Kits. Click on Solution Kits. We're going to go over to Feature Release 11.20, Commvault Express. Once that, we're going to download that. That is going to be like our install package. From that, we're going to be able to download Commvault. So when it downloads, it's about a 23 meg file or something like that. So you see it's 20, 21 meg, 20 meg. We need this so we can download the software. So right click on it, run as administrator. And there's two different ways you can do it. There's one is where you download it. Download install on the local machine, or you can download it install later, meaning you put like a couple gig or whatever, so you can later install it. So I prefer to do it the way where I install it later. So I'm going to save it to a local uh, NAS drive, actually. So in my case, I'm going to put the destination as being my D drive, which is going to be my Western Digital NAS drive. I'm going to track to there files what is going on. I'm now prompted to install it like I said before now prompted to install it so choose the appropriate language in your case mine is English I push next welcome to the on the installer, agree, next. Now here's the difference with this one coming up. A little different than before. So I have two options. I can install the package locally in the computer, or I can download the package and install a different computer later, which I'm going to choose to download the package and install on a different computer. This is going to allow me to have that Commvault install, which is about eight, nine, ten gig, whatever it is, to be able to take that and move it anywhere and install Commvault even in the offline state. So in this instance, I'm going to choose everything. I'm going to choose Windows 64, Windows 32-bit, some of the Unix programs. So we'll go Unix, we'll go FreeBSD, 64 version, we'll go Linux, 64 version. We'll go Mac OS and Linux ARM 64. We'll do all those. We're going to download the Microsoft SQL Server updates. And look, everything looks fine here. Next. And then this is going to be a new install. I click Next on that. I want to include all the packages. I want all the packages, including Microsoft SQL. We're prompted to where we want to install the packages. In my case, I'm going to put it on my Western Digital NAS drive. Click Next. I'm then going to put it in location. Now, on my particular lab, I'm going to put it on my C drive. Then later on, I'm going to move the whole drive to my Z drive, which is my Western Digital NAS drive. So I'm going to download everything here, then move it afterwards. So I also want to create a tar as well. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to create a tar file. This is going to allow me to install the Unix packages and the location of it is going to be the same. So it's going to put it inside the download package location. And the tar package is probably going to be like eight gig, something like that. Then click next. Then click next. Okay, so it's installing now. It's downloading the package. It's going to be installing the tar file. Once it's been done and completed, once it's completed, have the download package location. You'll have the contents of your Windows and other files and your com search. Then also you have the download package of your tar. So your tar file is an 8 gig, 7 gig file 
used to install the Linux client the agency file agents as well in Linux. So the download package location, this is going to be your Commvault appliance, your Commvault com serve, your Linux PD agents as well, packages. Once that's done completed, probably going to end up with like probably like a 20, okay, 20 gig or so file. Your download package is going to have like your Windows, your com server, some of your and your download package tar file. It's going to be about an eight, about a seven, eight ter uh, gigabyte file or whatever. That's going to contain your install for your Linux, uh, Unix clients. So those are the two files. What I'm going to do on my instance on my lab is move those to my Western Digital NAS drive so that I can use them to install other computers. I'm going to be setting up my server, my com server, really, my com server server on the Windows client. Before I do that, I need to be able to log into the server remotely. So I'm at the server manager now. I've already, obviously, I've already changed the host name of the computer, computer name, rather, excuse me, of the, of the computer. Already set up, already installed Windows OS and all that stuff. I'm going to click on local server. I'm going to click on remote desktop. I'm going to click that, disable. And I'm going to enable it. That's going to allow me to remotely access this computer so that I can do what I need to do install Commvault, install Active Directory. I'm going to push apply, push OK, and then I'm going to remote into this machine. So the IP address I need to use to log in here is 192.168.2.101. Open up my remote desktop manager, click on connect, set an IP address, change the name of the and log in. Before I install Commvault on this machine, I need to set it up as an Active Directory domain controller. So that's what I'm going to do, actually. Close all this. I'm going to go to my dashboard. I'm going to click on Add Role and Features. Click Next. Select the role-based or feature-based installation. Next. I see that I have everything there listed. So that's the reason I changed the host name beforehand that I have the correct host name that I can identify it. Click Next. Then going to select Active Directory Domain Services. I'm going to check that. Click on Add to Feature. you notice it. Checked it. Add Feature. You'll see Checked. Click Next. I'm going to leave everything else unchecked. I'm going to select the .NET Framework. I'm going to leave the everything unchecked there. Before I would have done it, where I would have checked it before, but in this instance, I'm going to leave everything checked and just leave the default. Click Next. Click Next again. And click Install. I'm then going to close the installation progress. I'm going to select the little arrow flag looking thing here that's yellow. Select that. Then I'm going to promote this server to a domain controller. I'm going to put, I'm going to select to add a new forest. I'm going to name the forest. In my instance, it's going to be get a job in tech.local. Once I'm happy with the domain here, get a job in tech.local and push next. I'm going to leave everything checked here by default and everything the forest. 2016 type of specific domain controller capabilities. I'm going to leave everything as default, but the user, uh, password that I define in here. I'm going to select next after that. Okay. I'm also going to select next as well here. I'm going to leave this unchecked, the DNS designation. Select next.
And we see our get a job in tech has shown up here as our NetBIOS domain name. I'm gonna click next on this. I'm gonna leave everything as default, database folder, the log file folder, all that. I'm gonna leave that default and push next. And push next again. I'm gonna read all this if I so desire. Okay, pre-checks are already done. Once I hit install, what's gonna happen is the server is gonna reboot. After it's done installing. Next, we're gonna log in after it's rebooted. We're gonna log in with our credentials. Now this is a domain, so it's gonna be get a job in tech slash administrator and then privileges. Okay, and we can see that we're who we are. We're in a domain here. So I just opened up the command prompt and did a who am I? And it said domain and the name of the. Before I install the Commvault software, I'm just going to add a user. I'm going to click on administrator tools here and then Active Directory users and groups. And I'm going to create a group. I'm also going to create a user. So first, I'm going to create a group. Uh, right click on users new and then group call this the admins group domain level that's fine there and then a new user so i'm going to do new followed by user and i'm going to put the username in here push next give it a password check the user must change password login and then check the password requires then select next and finish. Finally, I'm going to add the Commvault user, both the main admins as well as the DB admins group. So right click on Commvault, do member of, I'm going to add and put domain, be a domain admin. And I also want to add them as CB admin. Put check name, okay. So they're in two groups now. They're in the CV admins group and the domain admins group. Apply. Okay. I'm ready to install my Commvault software. I'm going to log off as administrator. I'm going to log in as Commvault. Okay, I'm ready to log in and I'm ready to download the software. So I'm going to click on my software folder here. So I'm going to now download the software. I'm going to install Commvault now. So I've had the location where the Commvault software is, download package location, followed by Windows, because ComServe. I'm going to click on setup and right click. click. I'm going to follow the steps here. So I'm going to select my language, in my case is English, push next. Now I'm going to install it locally on this machine. So it's a little different than before. I'm going to agree to the license here. I'm going to install the package on this computer, push next. We move my minimize my screen here. Do a little real estate. So here to see what it's doing is going to copy all the dependencies before it installs Commvault. It's going to ask me where I want to install it. In this case, I'm going to install it on my C drive. I have about five gig or so free, so I think I'm fine there. Next. What you'll see right off the bat when you do this is it installs a folder called Commvault. What's also going on is it's going to be installing the Commvault content store here, as well as in your registry, it's going to make a registry notation for Commvault systems. So it's going to be their HP local machine software Commvault systems. It also installs a version of Microsoft SQL as well as MongoDB, which you here yet. Well, when you install ComServe. And you can watch it. Look and register here under steps. You can see what it's doing. Some of the things that are incomplete yet. Complete. Complete. Some of them are completed. 
And we just an update here a little bit when it's installing. What you're going to see is you're going to see the instance 001, and then you're going to see under machines, and it's going to list comserve here. Machine. And uh, when it installs, okay, our com serve has now completely finished, completed install. Now we just log in this, we click finish, and what it's going to do is going to prompt us to that URL there, and we'll be able to log into our com serve. So once I've installed the com vault, of course, I mentioned, right, I will go to start com vault. Commvault Command Center, which is this URL here. Commvault Comcell is this one here. And then, of course, the Process Manager, the Commvault Process Manager, is this one right here. Just we want to make sure that it, everything's ready and good to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an account now. So we've logged in now. We're prompted to set up our storage pool. I'm going to skip it, actually, in this one here. And let me just check real quick here. So that's all good. And then I'm going to log in Java console just in that one. This one. So I can log in both the command, Commvault command center, as well as the Java console. I've verified, of course, that I can get both into the Java console. Command center over a little bit yeah so i have the commvault command center here and i have the java console here so that's good to go we can we'll go from here so from here we'll be able to do a couple different things but just to be able to log in to commvault get it working first thing i'll probably do is just set up a account probably in commvault different than an admin username actually that we can from there.